Sorry, I just need to. I need to get the giggles get out. The giggle out and the song. I need to get the giggles and the song and out. So, it's okay. We go singing along. Um. Uh, all right. Hey guys, welcome back to What the Forks. What the Forks. What the Forks. A Twilight Book Club. Today we will be discussing Eclipse Part Two, starting with Chapter Eighteen through the end, Chapter Twenty Seven, and the epilogue of the book. But before that, uh, ladies, introduce yourselves. Hey, y'all, I'm Jordan. And I'm Kiki. And I'm Sarah. And we are all Team Edward. Edward! (laughs) And will forever be after finishing Eclipse. Exactly. (laughs) But before we jump into the book, um, there's not a lot of Twilight news. However, uh, Kiki and I did watch a movie with Kristen Stewart. Ooh, that was actually one? very fun. It's called Seaberg. Mm-hmm, the Jane Seaberg story. Which one is? I don't think I've seen that one. It came out this year. Um, I've got. Do you want me to read a little synopsis? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, and then this is a story I didn't know because you know back in the '60s the government did some real shady shit. Back in the '60s only. I mm, mean, girl. Fair. That's the <laughs> stuff that's like been declassified. Okay. And has yeah, come yeah, out. yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um. So in the late 1960s, French new wave actress and breathless star Jean Seberg becomes the target of the FBI due to her support of the civil rights movement and her romantic involvement with Hakeem Jamal, a Black Panther activist. She soon finds her life and career in jeopardy as the overreaching surveillance and harassment starts to take a toll on everything she holds dear. Oh, I was aware of that story. I didn't know they made a movie about it. They made a movie. And Kristen Stewart plays Jane Seberg. And it, the fashion was on point. It was well done. Um, she did a lot of overcorrecting. Does she look pretty? She, she looks, did, she she looks she, yeah, she looks good. twiggy. She looks like Ooh. twiggy. Not necessarily Jane, but. I really, really was proud of her. Like, every time she was going to scoff, you could see her correct. You know? You know like, yeah. you could yeah, see yeah, her. Yeah. Like, you could see her over, like, think about, don't don't bite your lip. Don't do this. So, it, this film, my, my favorite, she got rid of her Kristenisms. Kristen Stewart thing was on a Saturday Night Live, and I quote this all the time, when they said, you look like a witch cursed you not to smile, but you're trying really hard anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. It's so correct. And yeah, it's so correct. Um, but I feel like this is the movie that maybe got her the role of Princess Diana because oh. this is you know a biopic as well. She I think did a really good job. I yeah. was impressed by her. The story was told well. She did a great job. Um, I felt for her throughout the entire film. It was fucked up what the FBI CIA did to her. Mm-hmm. Like the surveillance was crazy. But also, could someone have helped Homegirl find a bug? Like they're putting. Pretty obvious. In fact, they were bugs like the size size of cell phones. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, I actually recommend it. Watch it if you're a Case 2 fan. Watch it if you're a hesitant Case 2 fan. And let us know what you think of it because it's really good. So, Jordan, that's your homework for this week. Okay. What was it on? Like Netflix, Hulu? Where did we watch it? Prime? Amazon Amazon Prime. Everybody has all streaming now. Yeah. Just like Google it. Um, I want to, we've had a few little mini episodes come out and I want to talk about what our next mini sodes are going to be. So, thanks to the Twitterverse, I have learned. That apparently on Stephanie Meyer's website, she has excerpts from the books that didn't make it into the final versions. And they're short little mini snippets that I think would be really fun to talk yes. about. So we've got like Emmett chases a bear or something. And I haven't read them. I just read <laughs> the title. bear is my favorite thing. So I think that would be really, 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 really fun to do for our mini uh, coming up. Can I just say that our, all of our listeners and fans are great, but I have found particularly love for the Twilight fandom that exists on Twitter. Yes. While we're working on this project. Oh my God, yes. There's so many Twilight fans on Twitter and y'all are the best thing that's ever happened to me. I know. And there's a few people who have brought up questions, right? So like one of the biggest ones and it gets answered in Eclipse. So I'm like, these are book readers. These, I mean, these are movie watchers, not book readers is what I've decided. That they're like, how come Edward's power doesn't work on Bella, Aro, Jane, but yeah. Jasper's works and Alice's works yeah. and Alice answers it in this book and she's like because you know those are su- not psychic abilities like everything mental right Edward penetrates her brain Aro would penetrate the mm-hmm. brain Jane makes you think that you're being hurt when you're not actually being hurt mm-hmm. exactly and Jane makes you the, yeah exactly what you said Jane that I'm um, sorry I was distracted <laughs> so by our producer stupid. making sex fingers <laughs> Ernie. Ernie God <laughs> uh, but you know Alice, she only sees decisions people make. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jasper's like pheromones or some shit. Yeah. And he's like working just, on your hormones. He's working on your hormones. He's working on your heartbeat. He's lowering, He's making so your heart rate go down. a mind chill. Yeah. Bella yeah. can protect 
her mind. People the one mind. question it, yeah. that our Twitter, that not our Twitter followers, but that Twitter mm-hmm. folks keep bringing up is that Alice Colvin Cliff stopped 9 11. And I went on a mini rant about you this did. the other day. Please it was, do it I again. I kept seeing it. Mm-hmm. Y'all, it's not how her power works. She can't see everything. She no. has to tune into certain people mm-hmm. to be able to see what's going on. She can't just monitor the event for te- monitor the world for terrorist attacks. No, she's like she has to be like, like a professor. Yes, yeah. you know? right. If she's playing the stock market, she's probably honed in on like a particular company or a particular stockbroker and knows when his things are going to hit. Exactly. Mm-hmm. She'd be like, "What about Apple? What about Microsoft?" Yeah. Like back in the seventies. Exactly. The- she can look at those particular things, but she's just not out here looking at all the future of the whole world, y'all. Calm down. Right. She would have to like. That's why she can see Arrow and she can see certain things because she's honed in on those people specifically. She'd have to know, like, Osama bin Laden had this plan, or, like, even be like, who even know who the man is. Right? Come on, y'all. So I need y'all to breathe. Calm down. Um, another question some people were talking about on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's Susan Milan. Just imagine Susan Milan. <laughs> okay. Um, that people had on Twitter, and I think this is actually a very valid question, <laughs> and I did not... Think about this. So, you know, Jasper loses his mind when Bella gets a paper cut, right? Yeah. In the house. How is this man allowed, a vampire, allowed in high school where girls are on their periods and kids get nosebleeds every day? So, Stephanie Meyer actually addressed this, not in regards to Jasper, but to Edward and Bella at like Comic Con or something like that. Like years ago, people asked her, what does Edward do when Bella's on her period? And this is... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't do like blood very well. Like it makes me gag. So I'm gonna have a hard time explaining this to y'all. I'm ready. But uh, Stephanie Meyer basically said that when, once the blood is out of Bella's body in that way, it's like dead tissue. It's dead blood. So it's it doesn't smell the same and it's no longer appealing hmm. to Edward. Also, your I'm period's uterine lining. It's not actual like blood, blood, but blood. <laughs> it's, like, it's like guts <laughs> that is shedding off in blood. Right, right? but a nosebleed is bl- like blood you know yeah. what i mean it's the same Maybe as like cutting your finger take PE. oh that's true that's he could have skipped, yeah. skipped it they do skip blood day when it comes yeah to like, the, yeah and they go on camping trips and i know like in my high school i think pe was only required for two years yeah so by the time i like i could have opted out from it i did like absolutely i was by i'm done interesting you're lucky okay so we don't really have an answer, but we have an answer. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's like a, there's that. a half answer. I'm like, sure. There's conjecture. There's conjecture. He avoids PE, and hopefully the kid in him and ho- next to him in homeroom isn't prone to nosebleeds. <laughs> well, it doesn't get hot enough in Forks anyway for you to really like. It's got to be like know, exhaustion or heat for like you to get a nosebleed. So. Lack of humidity. Yeah. And then your brain's like, ah, fair <laughs> enough. Blood. Um, and then we were discussing last week that we weren't sure what the missing scene for. It, that was going to be put from Twilight into Midnight Sun, yes. right? That we were just because we didn't know, but we have someone, April Barnett, who is awesome. Hey, girl! Thanks for always like interacting with us. Hey, girl! Hey. Um, hey. She said that she thinks that the missing scene is Bella's reaction to actually seeing Edward's skin, because Chapter Twelve ends with him stepping into the sun and being glittery, and then Chapter Thirteen begins with them just like laying in the grass together and Ooh. like caressing each other. So it could be that little missing link, but it'll be from Edward's perspective of him being like, oh my God, I hope she's not afraid of my diamond skin. I don't know. <laughs> the first thing that popped Diamonds into my- girl's best friend. No, okay? the first thing that <laughs> popped into my mind when you said that and we're all adults here, so I'm just going to go for it. You yeah. know, you everybody has those parts of their body that they're a little self-conscious about. Absolutely. Like the little, your little cellulite or your stretch marks or your little baby belly. And and you take off your clothes in front of a new lover for the first time, and you're like, oh god, I hope they don't like say anything about it. And they're like, oh girl, come here. I think that's what this scene is. Edward's gonna be all self conscious about his sparkly skin, and and Bella's yeah. still gonna be like, oh girl, give me, that, to, give me that, give me that, give me that, that glitter, yeah, that body glitter, the rub off on me. Uh, <laughs> I like that squish. <laughs> Uh, I'm here for it, April. I appreciate that. If anyone else has any ideas of what this missing scene that will be in Midnight Sun could possibly be, send them our way. Tweet us. Email us. It's a meadow scene. It's a dance off. It's it is it is a meadow scene. That's what it's a dance off. <laughs> <dance-off. laughs> they make flower crowns in the meadow. <laughs> and they just like dance around like it's midsummer. Yeah. Like- <laughs> uh, amazing. So that's just like the little bit of Twilight discussion we've got. So guys, let's dive into the book. So my first notation is that 
<laughs> so the first time around when we read these books, yeah. we expected good books. <laughs> and that's <laughs> but that's why we ultimately got burned. Right. This time around, I think we've gone into it with the expectations so low and remembering the books being so bad and the movies being so bad and everybody hating it and making fun of it that they're great this time around. They're amazing. Yeah, I am really enjoying it. And actually this part of this Re- part of the reread this section back half of eclipse because you know last week we were like why did we like this book so much and now i actually remember yeah, why i yes, like this book so yes much. the back half of it really makes this book exactly i told you guys this is what it's gonna be like for me i was like, it's gonna be like that one star wars movie where i was like this was great but really it was like trash all the way to the very end yeah and that was this book i was like the, eh, whatever whatever backstory history yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And for me, what really sells it, and we can talk about it when we get there, is the inner. I actually really freaking love the interaction with Edward and Jacob, and that's what does it for yeah, me in this book. Yeah, and it, it, it's just like they have such a mutual hatred and a mutual love and a like weird mutual respect. disrespect yeah. and mm-hmm. respect. Like it's on such a Listen, weird little. Listen, polyamory could have solved this whole book series. You're not wrong. Mm-mm. I mean, we all know Stephanie Myers, Mormon. There's fundamentalists, and they're all into polygamy, so it could have worked out. It could have right? worked out. You know, just the other way with a yeah. wife with two husbands. And then we wouldn't have any weird baby imprinting. Oh, God. Oh, God. I can't. When we get there, <laughs> I am going to lose my mind. I just want to make the cover for that episode, the, the screen cap of Rosalie holding the weird baby yeah. robot like, with the <laughs> fucked up face. You guys know what picture I'm it's talking so about. Creepy. It's so creepy. so creepy. We did like, not have to make that baby so creepy. Yo, no. can I get a portrait tattoo? Somebody find the best portrait tattoo <gasps> artist post Corona, and let's get Renez May. <laughs> <laughs> no, please stop. Back to Eclipse. Okay, back to Eclipse. So where we start is when they are gonna start um, like training with Jasper. The book is a little different though. We get the training, and then we get his backstory. Um, but you mean the movie? The movie. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the movie, movie does it in reverse. I'm yeah. so, guys, I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> 20, baby. It's 2020. I'm ex- mentally exhausted just all the time. Uh, so we have the training with Jasper. It is time for the frenemies to work together to save Bella because everything is about Bella. And I appreciate that she feels the weight of that yeah. constantly mm-hmm. and the guilt of that constantly to the point where I get really annoyed by it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about you guys. It, no, I start to there's a her. point where you are like, yeah, you know, why is everything about you? This is a little ridiculous. But she gets so heavy fisted about it and like ham handed and you're like, okay, girl, have some self-esteem, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. She became weak in this book. And yeah. It drove me a little mad. But again, this book isn't about just her. It's like about everyone, which is what I liked about this book. Right. This is why I'm understanding you why know, this book book was my favorite it's about people who we realize like you cannot like each other but you can find common ground like and at the end of the day even if it wasn't quote unquote about bella there's still 21 newborn vampires that somebody has to deal with yeah Mm -hmm. they're coming to murder the town you know bella could have had an aneurysm and died the next day and there's still gonna be 20 newborn vampires coming to forks washington exactly so it's not just about her right whether it's uh victoria or not so like yeah exactly like girl it's not all it is about you but the big picture, the forest through the trees picture, yeah. is not you. It's about saving the people of Forks. Because if they don't intervene, everybody's dead. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the descriptions of the fight. And I think, like, of, like, the training, yes. I should say. And I love that, like, Emmett fights like a toddler. And, you know, he's just, yeah. like, barreling ahead. And, like, Alice, she gets the gold looks star. like dancing. Yeah, she's Gymnastics. like she's like a gymnast. Like, what was I saying? It was, like, the airbender girls, right? The, yeah. You know, talking about that, like, the, the pressure point girl that I cannot remember her name at the moment. Ernie, do you know her name? From Ernie. Airbender. Ernie, producer Ernie. Fine, whatever. Um, he'll look it up. And I just love, like, the reason Alice is so good is because she can see your every move. And I feel like her theme song should just be, I'll be watching you by the police. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because she's be watching, watching you, you, ever serve you take. Okay. Um, sorry. See, that's I like saw her more as like bad girls by MIA because she's just standing there watching you. Yeah. And then the last two's just like standing there, <laughs> like, like just bad, bad, young, bad, bad girls, girls do it. it. And then she just strikes <laughs> at the right moment. <laughs> she's like, I got this. And she's just so beautiful and graceful compared to everybody else. And I loved watching that in the movie because, you know, at one point Jasper like grabs her face to kiss her. And she's yeah. like, Jit, nope. And she like yeah. goes to a tree, climbs down, and knocks his ass out. And I'm like, yes, girl, mm-hmm. killing it. Um, I love that so much. And I think it's funny that the wolves like don't trust them, right? So they don't yeah. want to be human form to watch it all. And like the, the image of like 
Jacob trotting up to Bella, like making faces at her as a wolf, <laughs> like his tongue sticking also, out. He's like that derpy dog from Coco. There are, also <laughs> ten, there are 10 werewolves by this point, you guys. So yes. many werewolves. So many werewolves. I had forgotten. they're huge. They're, they're, huge. Bears, they're like remember? horses. Yeah. Just 10 horse-sized wolves just hanging out. Just watching watching vampires, vampires fight. fight. Listening to this Jasper guy covered in scars yeah. who's like, by the way, don't let a newborn squeeze you because they'll kill you. Yeah, it's like, don't go for the obvious kid. <laughs> and you're like, all right, sir. I'm like, thank you for giving Jackson Rathbone a moment to shine. Yes. Because he's a character that was like pushed aside so, so hard in the first two movies. And, excuse me. Um, sorry, guys. That was gross. Uh, and I loved, like... We get his backstory in the movie, and I feel like they did actually justice yes. to it. You yes. actually get to mm-hmm. see his scars. You see, like, you want to know how I got Maria, these scars? And he, like, <laughs> tells her. She's like, oh, yours is, like, mine. And he's another character that right now, I guess, in this Twilight resurgence, is getting a lot of backlash. And we kind of were, like, last time, like, fuck him yeah. for being in the Confederate Army. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, look, you can't hate the man. No, it's it's just Stephanie Meyer's implicit bias, which is, it is what it is. It Everybody is what, has it. Is it. It's where you came from. Yeah. Where he came from. And also- There were people who were Nazis who didn't want to be. You know? yeah. yeah. You do what you have to do to survive. Yeah. And like, you know, just like people, vampires are allowed to change. Yeah. Because can you say that who you were 10 years ago is who you are today oh, and who you will not. be 50 mm-hmm. years from now? Oh, God, no. You know what I mean? So like, they're living three, four plus lifetimes at this point- he, there's yeah. no way he's the same person he was back then. No, mm-hmm. And I think and I everyone should think, just give him a break. Yeah, everybody should give him a break. And you know, the whole thing, oh, he's a Confederate soldier is not, look, it's not Stephanie Meyer like glorifying the Confederacy. No. It's just implicit bias. There are so many people who are ignorant to what the Confederacy actually was, uh, what the Civil War actually meant. And I think she was just like, you know what? I want him to be Southern. I want him, you know, clearly it's got to be old timey. This is a very important part of American history. I can, you know, use this. Absolutely. And I don't think she had the knowledge at the time to really investigate that choice and say, is this a responsible choice to my black readers? Well, was she even thinking about black readers? Probably not because again, implicit bias. Well, what I, uh, when I'm looking at the book, like in the back of the book, I don't know if it's in the printed ones, but at least in the Kindle version, there are like discussion questions that yeah. are given. And one of them is, does Jasper's background change your opinion of him so oh, i think damn. it was written that way on purpose because you learn about him he's got this emotional yeah. bending and you're like wow this is crazy and then you learn that he's a gen- the youngest general yeah in the confederate army and does that change who you think he is as a person because we don't she never says what he was pro we just know that he was a part of that world and a part of that time and huge you know what i mean yeah. and then he was turned by a beautiful latina absolutely woman absolutely not it doesn't change my mind at all because i'm thinking about friends that i know now who are in the military who joined very very young absolutely a lot of people as young men yes for a lot of young men and women in our current society and this has been true throughout history the military is a way for them to upgrade their station and they're not yes. thinking about anything else absolutely so, a war hero especially back then yeah because in my head he'd have been made made especially as the youngest he's like i didn't have a good upbringing i he probably came youngest from a poor major. family yeah. youngest major in the confederate army. absolutely yeah, i know That's i'm gonna join this army i'm gonna rise up through the ranks and uh, i'm gonna live hello, real pretty alexander hamilton right thank you mm-hmm. not gonna get my shit Anyway, <laughs> I was like, I have had songs of that in my head forever. Anyways, so yeah, I just wanted to discuss that because that's a big discussion I've seen on Twitter yeah. a lot too. And I'm like, look, even Barack Obama felt that marriage was between a man and a woman back in 2012 and then yeah. changed his mind and said, no, the LGBTQIA community yeah. are and just like everybody else. So we're I all out of Love is love. Love you know, is free. Sprinkle I have more respect over. for people who are able to say I was wrong and change their opinion later. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And I feel like that's who Jasper is and we should not hate him. Like he's no longer my favorite character because he was in the Confederate. Besides, Jackson Russell is, is he's Fire, uh, honestly, he's the Jamie. reason I think that I loved that character so much, I'm not gonna lie. Um, that face though. I know. Uh, okay, so back to the book. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Jasper was 1,000 times willing to use Bella as bait. Yes. Because he's just like, he's just all about that war strategy. He's like, which, look, it'll turn him into a frenzy. Yeah, right? <laughs> I got to love a good strategist, you know? You know, all the pheromone talk, he's like, it's your smell. It's our smell. Well, if you're around them, then they won't smell you. And it's just <laughs> like, <laughs> smells. The smell <laughs> Um, well, he could carry him. That's not a bad idea. Also, I loved in this book that, like, half the time I was like, there isn't really a conversation having. <laughs> like, you're reading his mind, and then we're coming to conclusions. <laughs> imagine being Bella just like looking back and forth at people and being like what the fuck I, 
Yes, yeah. I love that this book, Edward went full tilt. Like, I can read Very minds funny. and I have no shame about it. Yeah, he's like, I'm just going to tell you what they're thinking. They yeah. don't trust us, so they're not going to be in their human form. Basically. It's like, okay, cool. So, like, training ends. It went really well. They're like, cool, thanks for the tips. And, like, Bella goes to hang out with Jacob. And she learns a lot. She learns Leah is the first female werewolf. Yes. Which I think is really Girl cool. Power. Right? Girl, Girl power. power. They should return to sexes. Um, and I feel like this kind of adds a little bit more to, like, the poor Leah, like, fuckery of it all. Because can you, like, you know, we know they can read <laughs> thoughts and things. So now she's the first female werewolf. We know the whole deal with Sam yeah. and Emily. And, you know, like, she's now pining and sad and everyone can read her diary you know you know yeah. what i mean and not only can everybody read her diary but i know as a human being if i have tried to maintain some semblance of a friendship with my ex and i just have to have the knowledge that they are dating someone new mm -hmm. just the knowledge of that bothers me and but you this girl has got me. more than knowledge she has got intimate, intimate details <laughs> Oh my God. But also, can I, you know, like we've learned more about this imprinting thing, which is super weird still, and I don't like it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it means like Sam doesn't have a choice, right? Yeah. But that means Emily had a choice. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that upsets me even more. Because Emily, that's her cousin, right? I can't imagine, first of all, as a friend, you just don't date your friend's, you know, man, <laughs> girl. But your cousin, your literal cousin, that you, he was just with her. Like, they, it's not like they yeah. broke up because of the imprinting. They didn't yeah, they break, break up, up like months ago. Right? Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, they broke up and they've been broken up for a it's year. It's like, uh, you imprinted on... Yeah, you literally who? stole my man. Yeah. On who? And especially Jacob talks about how they have a choice, right? You don't nece It's not necessarily a sexual choice. You could just be their best friend. So does this mean that Sam actually had been pining away? Like, maybe they both have been pining for each other for a really long time? Well, no. I think that the way that Jacob described it is that you... You... When... They did this to kind of skirt the whole gross pedophilia aspect gross. of imprinting. Uh -huh. You're whatever and they And so need. you're whatever they need at that time. So if they need a protector because they're a child, you're their protector. Right. If they need a friend because they're a teenager, then you're their friend. If you're both of dating age and they need a man's, then you're their man's. Right. And there's no reason why you wouldn't choose them because they've been everything to you yes. your entire yeah. life. And now that I'm thinking about it, how garbage is it that Leah just has her heart broken? Does she ever get a happy ending? Like, we have to go through this whole book we series. Never know. We, we never know. We never know. Can she please imprint on somebody who's going to be good to her and, like, right? buy her a house and make her cinnamon rolls and shit? Right? Just give me tacos. Potato tacos, Taco right? Bell. Exactly. Um, and uh, tell me I'm pretty. Yes. Tell me I'm pretty. Leah deserves that. Right. And I, I, I appreciate that Edward also finds imprinting to be really creepy. Because yeah. he's just like, mm, mm, mm. No, it's just real it's odd. Real it's gross really too. odd. It is real. It's, it's nasty. Um, and then we have, like, this weird Mama Mia-ness. <laughs> <laughs> right the Maury show subplot the Maury show subplot of Embry's like paternal side because like his mom wasn't a part of the Quilletti tribe but his maybe his dad was and it's like one of the four leaders of the tribe and you're like <laughs> who were so all married yeah, at the time they're all married, married. The time. so he's someone's half brother he's Jacob's half brother he's Sam's half brother we don't know whose half brother he is we have no idea whose half brother but he's he is. somebody somebody was dipping yeah somebody mm -hmm. had not imprinted and, and I'm just like what and was stepping out. Mm -hmm. And no one wants to admit who, because aren't they like all but one of them alive? Billy's still alive. Billy's still alive. Hold on. I have Clear like, water. Henry's not alive anymore. Yeah. So it's like, it's Quill Atera Sr., which is who I think is still alive. Yeah. Uh, Josh Uli, so Sam's dad, who mm -hmm. is, who wasn't around. Yeah. And then Billy Black, who, who is alive. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they all, I think what Jacob says is that they all are just assuming that it was Sam Yuli because he was not a good father to begin with. So it's yeah. like an easy target, but it could, it it could, could be, be Billy yeah. Black. Could Billy, be Black. 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 Billy Black was getting it in y'all. <laughs> <laughs> like wheelchair or not. I'm just saying, right. get it. All the parts still work. All right, daddy. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, and then we get in this conversation with Bella and Edward where Bella basically <laughs> like uses her Jedi mind tricks into getting Edward to not be a part of the fight. Yeah. yeah. And but again, book I still even though I'm not crazy about her Jedi mind trick, yeah. book Bella is so much better than movie Bella because she has so much more agency. Yes. I agree completely and like ugh, it irks me. And I also think like what I don't like about the movies versus the books is I think Jacob gets 
uh, put on a bigger, a better pedestal when he's kind of trash. Yeah, and they, they definitely make Jacob look better. Yeah, and they make Edward look a lot better in the movies. Edward is made to kind of look like this controlling douchebag the whole time. Where really, yeah. like, especially during this conversation, she apologizes to, like, constantly apologizes for doing stuff, and like, he gets a lot of shit for being like a stalker and controlling. And I, you know, I'm never gonna say it's okay that he climbed in her window and watched her sleep before he knew who she was, but. <laughs> Um, he, they like totally. But I mean, how cute was he, though? I mean, it's okay. Uh, Jason Momoa could climb in my window and watch hey. me sleep. Michael B. Jordan could climb in my window and watch. I, I mean, care. Noah Centineo, let's get it. Um, but th- he doesn't get the credit in the films that the books give him for becoming a better person. And I really yeah. love that he's always like, he's like, don't apologize. Uh, he's like, never be afraid to tell me how you feel if this is what you need. Like, Their relationship in the books is is much more egalitarian than I remember. It is very same. much on equal footing, and they very much respect each other. They find compromise. Uh, they they honor each other as people. Like they just both have a lot more agency in the books than they do in the movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's also a quote from Bella in this book that I wrote down because I loved, and she was like, "There's what I need. There's what I want, and what I can live without." Mm-hmm. And yes. it's like. That's letting you know, like, hey, there may be choices on the table, but, like, I'm choosing what I know won't kill me. Right? There are grown woman decisions happening here. Yes. Yeah. Like, I need you. I feel like I'm dying without you. Right. And then later, you know, I'm just jumping ahead a little bit, when um, Bella basically tells Jacob, no, that I, yeah, I do love you, but I love him more and I need him more, you know, and she's like like crying like it's a horrible breakup in Edward's yeah. arms he's like are you okay and I'm like Edward you didn't see what she was like when you yeah. left mm-hmm. yeah and in, in this conversation um you know he says or you know as part of maybe not this conversation but it happens in the book where he says you know what's mine is yours including like tuition money blah blah, blah when we get married which yeah. like on the one hand yes he's trying to like to, to steer her in the direction that he wants by saying, well, what's mine is yours, including money. So like you can go to college because, you know, yeah. we're married now, blah, blah, blah. But again, that goes like this relationship is very equal footing. Yeah. He very much is like, because mind you, they're rich as fuck. He could be like, well, you still got to sign this yeah. vampire prenup. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't do that. He could throw it out there. He right? doesn't throw a vampire prenup. He's just like, no, nah, like what's mine is yours. Like tuition money, whatever you need, baby right. girl. They're both playing a different game and Edward's a little bit more slick about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a okay. part where he says, and I wrote this down, he says that he can always hear her heartbeat. How mm-hmm. annoying would that be if your boy, like if your boyfriend always knew when you were anxious because he could just hear your heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like up. he can't read your thoughts. That's, that's fine. fine. But he can just hear your heartbeat. Right. And you get nervous. You're like, damn. <laughs> and he's like, damn. Girl, why are you nervous? We just at the DMV. <laughs> but also I feel like that lets him know when like things are getting too heavy. Yeah. Right. And he's trying to keep that line. Yeah. Of, like, Maybe I'm I should back off a little. You. I'm going to back off. Like mm-hmm. I can hear your heartbeat. Yeah. And like. You're you're real into this. Yeah. So I'm going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Edward, I got, you know, because like Jacob gave her that bracelet, right, with the little wolf on it. Yeah. And I love that Edward's got jokes, right? Oh, so, so Edward can give you gifts then. So he could just give you gifts. Yeah. Then. He's like, you could, he could, that doesn't make sense. But then he gives her a fucking diamond. A diamond. That she doesn't a know. A shaped diamond. What's a diamond? She doesn't know. She's like, it's a cubic zirconia. It's a piece of plastic. No, girl. Alice girl, almost no. gives it away. Yeah. And she's like, yeah. but he did give you a rock. And she's like, excuse me. And Wait, what? <laughs> Edward's like, no, no, no. Don't tell her she'll take it off. <laughs> yeah, she'll take it off. And I was just like walking around with like a five carat diamond yeah. on her little yeah. trinket bracelet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh god. And <laughs> it's just I just thought that was hilarious. I love it. He's like, here's a rock, girl. You won't let me put a ring on it. Here's well, I'm a rock. Put a stone on it. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Uh, you know what else is hilarious? When it says she yanked open the buttons of her blouse. Oh my god. <laughs> Up with the blouses. This girl Who is this girl. It's the so skirt and her blouse. blouse. Be- okay, so we learned Edward's a virgin, <laughs> <laughs> which also explains his weirdness. Yeah, and like his like he's like 107, and it's fine. Uh, but I just love that Bella is so like super thirsty, right? And she's just like ready to jump yes. on that D. Yeah. She yeah. And she's like, like, me down, Edward. Jesus I'm gonna Christ. show you what this mouth do, Edward. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, it's good. We good. He he's just like. Stop trying to take off your clothes. But I love, I love that that how like that's her last like this is the last human experience I have to have. Yeah, which is so like indicative of the fact that she is a teenager, but also just so like fun and beautiful. And like I was sitting there and I'm like, what would be the last like, what as a 32 year old woman like, what's the last human experience that I would want to have? And I probably feel like I don't know like, 
steak and lobster like i don't because you can't taste food for real anymore right like, i don't i have no clue i know but i have to quit my vegetarianism maybe i mean technically you're a vegetarian if you don't eat human blood yeah so like it's I know, just one I of those like i wouldn't want to like die and be like because i've never had like chick-fil-a <laughs> right like it's one of those things where it's like, like it's very oh, chick-fil-a i feel like i wouldn't want to die without <laughs> No, right, but it's one of those tastes. sweet like her, Don't worry, girl. her final human experience is like I'm gonna get that D though, yeah, which is so 18 year old girl. It really and it's is beautiful, and I love it so much. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I just it's like this all happens because Alice is like we're all going to eat, we're gonna leave you guys alone in the house together. Yeah, <laughs> and Bella's like, oh, we're gonna be alone. I know what I want to do, <laughs> and he's like. Ah. But then he's like proposes to her with yeah. this like antique, beautiful ring, and he's like, "No, <laughs> I want to save. Mother. I yeah. want to save your soul. Your soul matters to me." And he, the funny part when she's like, "No, no, no! Like we can do this. It's going to be safe. Like this is the last thing that I, mm-hmm. you know, I want this as a human because who knows what the next couple of years of my life are going to be like as a vampire." And he just fucking rips off part of the bed, and he's like, "Really? Yeah." <laughs> yeah. I also like that, like, <laughs> movie, book, and everything. Edward explains, like, I'm from a different time, you know? Like, I would have courted you. We would have mm-hmm. gone on chaperone dates. Yeah. I might have snuck a kiss or two after asking your father to for me. your yeah. hand in marriage. Like, and I, I would have just I, let you give it up for free. <laughs> yeah. I wrote down that, like, I don't necessarily, like, I don't want to contribute to toxic masculinity and say that all that men are after are sex. I really don't. Right. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I find it difficult to believe that a hundred and... 20 year old Edward has been out here this whole time and she's throwing it at him and he's still going to be like, nah, girl. Yeah. It's very, (laughs) I I just, I find some difficulty (laughs) with the, um, I was going to say this. No, just the, the religious overtones in parts of the there book. There is definitely. It's because very there religious. are religious overtones. It's and it's religious. very much, uh, and I, I don't even want to say religion, but there's just like misogynistic overtones. And I will talk about this more probably when we get to Breaking Dawn. Mm-hmm. But I always liken it to Buffy, yeah. where there are a lot of shows that have these misogynistic overtones that I'm not aware of, where when the woman has sex, the woman is the one who, bra- who bears the consequences. Like Angel uh-huh. and Buffy? Exactly. With Angel and Buffy, mm-hmm. Buffy's the one who bears the consequences of them having sex because Angel gets his soul taken and Buffy has to deal with him being a fucking mass right. murderer at this point. And mm-hmm. all because he had sex with her. With her. Mm-hmm. You know, Bella has sex with Edward as a human and she ends up pregnant with a demon baby that's going to kill her. Like, mm-hmm. that's the part that I take objection to and yeah. feel like, well, I Edward just should have screwed her brains out because, you know, fuck your moral quandary and your misogyny. I hear you. And, yeah. like, you know, um, I don't know what I was going to say. Also I don't know where I was going to go with that. It's saying that men can't have virtue. <laughs> yeah, right? There it yeah. is. Yes. Thank you. Yes. yes. Yeah. Which I think is fucked up because yeah. men are allowed to hold some type of hierarchy to their virginity, too. Yes. They should want their first time to be special or be something. Right. Be something yes. and that's bigger what- than just... I put yeah. my penis in something. Yeah, I mean, there like, should be, there should, not there should be, but we would hope that there's emotion or meaning or respect or something more attached to it yeah. than a notch on your bedpost. And we don't live in a society that does that. And yeah. so, like, just reading Eclipse as an isolated incident, yes, absolutely, Edward, protect your virtue. Get it, boy. Like, do you. <laughs> you do. Uh-huh. We respect We res- re- respect your respect. But then you get to Breaking Dawn and you're like, oh. Yeah. Well, like, someone had mentioned to me that Twilight was inspired to ke- teach kids abstinence. And I don't know how true that is, but, yeah. you know, I've said I grew up Mormon. I am no longer Mormon. I understand where Stephanie Myers, a lot of this yeah. kind of comes from. And reading the line where she says something, uh, he says, like, you've only kissed one person. Like that kind of solidified that for me. And it's kind of like yeah. some weird, bad Mormon role play. Yeah. Whereas like <laughs> you've only kissed one person and she's like, yeah, I'm fine with that. Like, cause you should be fine with only being with yeah. the one person that you've ever like, that you started a relationship with. And that's, that was a big thing for me personally. Edward and Bella should have soked y'all. If they should have just done weirdness. it. Yeah. I know. Y'all know about soaking. Google it. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's why people are getting kicked out of BYU for soaking. <laughs> so for what? We will talk about we'll this Google off Google the Google podcast. It. Oh my goodness. We're not going to talk about this here. This is it's not an really R rate. I don't know something dirty. I know. I'll tell you about it later. But no, that's why kids were getting kicked out of BYU for that. And they could have done that. You know, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Back to Sorry. the book. Back to the book. So Edward is just over the scent of Bella's blood. Yeah. He's just like, I just figured it out. <laughs> it's like, oh, I thought you were dead for 24 hours and now I'm okay. And I figured it out. I just thought that was like a really I don't, I, man. Listen. I mean, I get that though. You, re- I'd rather smell you alive 
than right. ever think you were dead Yo, again. There's never been a situation where I smell the taco and I'm like, I don't want it. Right? Like, <laughs> never. Not never. once in my entire fucking life. I, I can bro. agree with that because after even like, 12 years of vegetarianism, right? rotisserie chicken still smells even good. Even coming out of a concert and you know, you know that street the meat is not good dog. for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, but I'm still just like, oh God, give me that street meat though. I know, I've still never had one, but I want one. I haven't because I can't trust the street meat. But if I smell it and it smells real good, I'll stop it at Del Taco. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, what that's my compromise. You don't, you don't go to the tamale lady? Uh, <laughs> So the whole plan now is that Jacob, so to hide Bella's scent, they're going to go like hide in the in a mountain somewhere in a tent and Edward's going to meet them there and Jacob's scent of his wolfhood is going to mask her scent so the va- the baby vampires can't get to her. Yes, you have a Sorry, finger up. I have a finger up. Before we get there, yes. Alice guilts Bella into a wedding. You're right. <laughs> she show does. She, she sure, sure does. does. She like straight up puppy dog eyes her and is like, please, let me you let me play at a wedding. I already have your dress. <laughs> I know. She, she does. She already had that dress in dress. a closet. Yeah, She's she had it for a like, year. Well, maybe these things can't be decided last minute. I know. It takes time, Bella. Yeah. It's like, girl, this this dress has been in the closet for like a year. <laughs> like since they started dating, since yeah. she saw the first vision yeah. of her she as was a like, vampire. You know, I gotta order this. You know exactly. she got this dress. It like, took a long time. She saw them running through the woods together. She's like, oh, Edward's going to find a girl. Let me plan a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the, the plan, back to the, the plan. The plan, the plan is that uh, Jacob is going to hold Bella, run through the woods, and meet up with Edward somewhere at a, his, a planned his location. His werewolf scent will mask Bella's scent, so they'll be safe. Right. And I appreciate that during this jaunt through the woods, that Jacob is trying to, like, be Jacob and be creepy. And he brings up the kiss, and he's like, oh, you've been thinking about it. About it. And Bella's like, um... No, because I don't consider that a kiss. I consider that assault. Thank Thank you, you. girl. Thank you. Thank you. I have never been madder at something in my life than I was about this whole Jacob kiss thing. He literally played with her mind. Master manipulator. Yeah, because it wasn't a kiss. I'm just going to die and whatever. And that's messed up because I believe that in platonic love, you can love your friends so much yeah. that you would do anything he brings to up make sure they didn't leave all you. this garbage he's like well i was supposed to be chief but i didn't want it and i gave it up and i like he's straight up that meme where he's like guess i'll die now right yeah. <laughs> You're like, he okay everything to solicit this kiss after her and jacob himself says it's possible to love more than one person at a time absolutely which like mm-hmm. polyamory you <laughs> and edward get over your garbage we gonna make a new reality TV show out of it. Y'all gonna be rich. We're gonna live in a commune. It's gonna be great. Great. Oh my god. Um, and I love that Jacob kind of learns this hard lesson because he's pressing her so hard. Like after everything he did, after everything I helped you with, after blah blah blah, and she's like, "Look, yeah, but I can remember those things. I remember how I felt, but I can also forgive." Yeah, we yeah. forgive. We don't always forget, which I think is a very important and human lesson um, to have in these books, especially books that are related to to teenagers. That no, you can go through very difficult things with people, and while you don't always need to give them a pass, you can forgive them. You know, mm-hmm. you can forgive without forgetting. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, trust may be a mirror. Yeah, uh, you can put it back together. You will still see the crack. Yeah, but yeah. sometimes you're still happy with the reflection. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Oh, that ain't me, girl. Well, well whatever. Somebody just else said it. Bitches claim it. It's fine. And then I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then we get to the campsite. And first of all, how big is this tent? <laughs> I have no you clue. imagine it different here's than the thing. I did. I thought it was like a little tiny two-person tent. Thing. I go camping, not necessarily regularly. It's something that I've gotten into in maybe the last year or okay. so. And I usually use a four-person tent. Yeah, and okay. a quote-unquote four-person tent it's barely big enough for two people, y'all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The shit's small. But like, so how big is this fucking tent I'm like, that they're they in? Have, one of those, like, have you ever been in was those tents that are like the, the tent the homes? Have was you it been the in Harry those? Potter tent where it was magic on the inside and it's like nine rooms? <laughs> it's like nine rooms and you unzip it. Right? And go into- I mean, I've been in one of those home tents that have like the wall, the, yeah. fa- the faux wall yeah, and yeah. stuff. And I'm like, is it that big? Because they're not saying Jacob has a hard time fitting in there with them. Yeah. But he's just like, he's in there and it sounds like they're standing comfortably. Right. And there's three people in there and there's comfortable 
enough room for Edward to be like, well, go ahead and warm her up. I'm just going to go over here. Right. I think listen to your perverted thoughts about my girlfriend. <laughs> this is yeah, like, nasty. This, these are my favorite chapters of the book. Oh, and too. I just me love too. it so much. I just love that, like, imagining, like, Edward yelling at Jacob in book form about how they're going to fix Bella, like, I love freezing it. to death. He's like, well, go be helpful. Go get a space heater. And he's like, yeah. well, welcome to your space heater. Here's me shirtless about right. to snuggle exactly. up on your girlfriend. It'd be easier if she was naked. That's just survival yeah. 101. <laughs> Just survival 101 uh, if you were naked. I like, you're an asshole, in. but you're right. <laughs> I love that they have this heart to heart when she's asleep, but the whole, like, it's just, yeah. God, scenes between them are so entertaining. They are. And that's why I'm really, not only because I feel like it's a healthier option, yeah. but I'm really pushing this polyamory angle because I, I feel are. like Jacob really and are, Edward girl. would be I know, <laughs> like, girl. Usually <laughs> I'm on a limb. They would be the my weight. funniest. Right. But you Listen, are this is the hill me. that I will, I will gladly... <laughs> Like Chance the Rapper, I have run up this hill and I will die on and it. And I gotta die on it. <laughs> no, and I love like the imagery of like Jacob howling into the wind <laughs> while he's outside the tent and Edward just reading his thoughts like he's talking to his invisible friend. Uh-huh. Yes. You know, and you're just like, what is happening? <laughs> and he's just like, no. And like arguing with himself. But, like he's that dude at the taco truck we saw the other day yes. who was totally on meth and talking to his invisible friend. <laughs> and you're like, that's what's happening. Edward's on drugs. Okay, but this is a question that I wrote down. Uh-huh. Is Jacob annoying? Because the books are from Bella's perspective. You know what? That's very possible. And so the, I'm going to have to marinate Yeah, on. is he this annoying because the books are from her perspective and she clearly has a goal and an end game and a narrative that she wants to push? If this were a third Look. person... Look. No, no, but no. No, 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 no. Listen, it's just like Harry Potter when people are like, oh, well, you know, Draco's so fucking fucked up because... Sorry, guys. No, but because I love Draco it. Malfoy. I'm not going to lie. I do. But you're seeing the books from Harry's perspective, and so Draco is his bully and blah, blah, blah. Right. Where, like, if you can read between the lines, you're like, well, Jake, Draco, you know, he did have his faults, but Draco he wasn't is, necessarily a bad guy. What I see from Bella's perspective is that she is being manipulated by two men who are in love with her. Right. Yes. And in this book, we see Edward you know, kind of acquiesce, like, okay, you know what? I really I've been fucking controlling you and I'm gonna stop. I'm not your dad. I'm gonna stop. You know what? Deal off my daddy, whatever though. you want. I'm going to stop. And you get that from Edward. Yes. We hear yeah. those words, we read those words. And he apologizes for it. And he says sorry. We never get that from yeah, Jacob. True. Jacob literally says don't be mad at me that he's a better manipulator than me. He's had hundreds of years of practice. Well, yeah. okay, but it's like, uh, <laughs> you can go fuck yourself. Okay, no, but to that point, though, I did write down that Jacob and Edward are both assholes during this whole, like, prolonged tent situation. Mm-hmm. Because, yes, Jacob is having untoward thoughts about, and we'll never know. I, I wish we did know. I think they are. I want to know. I just, like, is he like laying there and be like, oh, this is so nice. She smells so nice. Or is he like really thinking about his boner? Like, what, like what's I, happening? I think he's thinking about his boner. And I think he's thinking about what it'd be like to touch her boobs. I think he's imagining making out with her. You know what I mean? Like, I think he's like, he's playing real dirty because he knows that yes. Edward can see it. But so here's the thing, though. So Jacob does that all night long with his, you know, dirty thoughts, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but you know, but, Jacob rolled up in his like but, gray sweatpants being like, I'm going to help you out. Right. With his dick imprint. Yay. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> They're both a-holes because so Jacob does that. But then when Jacob leaves the tent in the morning after they have this fight inside of a tent, which I still don't understand how big is this tent they have fighting inside of it. I know. Girl, I don't get I it. I'm confused. But <laughs> so Jacob goes outside and Jacob chooses to eavesdrop on the conversation that Edward and Bella are having. Yep. And Edward, being a mind reader, knows, knows that it. Jacob is eavesdropping and still Don't decides hate to the bring the player, up, hate the game. He brings up the engagement anyway. Oh, so purpose. listen, he Don't is, hate Edward the player, is hate the a game. master manipulator. Come yeah. on. Just, Girl, he, I'm not mad. I, he did that on purpose because he was fine. Like, I'm knows. fine with some seasoning, okay? I'm fine <laughs> with some seasoning on some food. Like, uh, when I'm during, not okay with someone telling me yeah. how I should season my food. Uh, I appreciate though, like during the tent thing when like Bella's finally warm and like she's asleep and they have their like him and Jacob have their own heart to heart. Like, doesn't it's not so pretty? I love that gr- scene. I think it's lovely and they're like open and honest and I feel like it kind of catches you off guard a little bit. Brother and, husbands, but husbands, and you know Edward has this line and he says, um, "I'm jealous of that too." But it was through mind reading. And I'm like, what is it that he's jealous of? Is he jealous of their friendship, of the times they had together when they were gone? Well, he's he was jealous gone. because he can't 
dick Bella down like he wants to. You think that's what it is? Oh, that's exactly where my <laughs> mind went. So uh, you think that Jacob is thinking about dicking Bella down and how he could do it safely, and Edward is jealous because he can't do that safely? I, I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't was go there. That, I didn't go there. I, I was, was thinking sorry that he's just jealous of like their friendship. The that's what I Call thought. Call me Oscar the Grouch because I'm in the trash. <laughs> But I, yeah, I just thought it was like, I'm jealous of that too. So he's jealous of their friendship and the relationship yeah. that they could have. Yes. Because Jacob knows what it could be. And, and he's even what, like, she's in love with me too. I think that he's jealous of the the life that they could potentially have. Mm-hmm. They could have a safe life together. They could have kids together. They can do all these things that Edward assumes is not possible. Right. She could have a normal human experience. Yeah. Yes. But the thing is, she made her big girl decision. And it's she still put her big be. girl pants and said, this is what I want. And it's still wouldn't be a normal human decision there's a lot of monday morning quarterbacking going on between Absolutely. both edward and jacob about bella's life and what she could have or what she could do and it's not possible like that you know like you guys are just being a-holes you're assuming things that aren't necessarily plausible yeah um i like that jacob kind of forces edward to look at things that he's kind of shoved aside a little bit yeah and he says look i have thought about those things like well, like what you're saying with the life he could have with her. He could, he's like, I never wanted this vampire life for her. I've been saying this from the beginning. And I think that helps Jacob also respect Edward a little bit yeah. as well. I also feel like this is one of the reasons that Jacob might have, you know, or Edward might have kind of said, you know what, deals off, do whatever you want. Yeah. Because of these like telepathic conversations with Jacob. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. Now, he's now questioning, even though he loves Bella and feels like he can't live without her. I'm taking more than I'd ever want to take from another human being. I definitely think there's more to that conversation that we don't see because it is Belle's perspective. Right. And I, I just wish we had more because I right. really like the little yeah. heart to heart that they were having. And I, I like that it. Jacob is like, I wish I had more time. If you had stayed away longer. Yeah. Things would be really different. And, you know, I've brought up before that I wish Stephanie Meyer would have allowed Bella to have these feelings and yeah. become like a real, real triangle. Because imagine yeah. if those we were allowed those six he months. He came back yeah. and, like, and he came back Whoa, and she had moved on. Yeah, yeah, you have a boyfriend. What the fuck? And I think that's something like, you know, we see that in movies and that's something that happens in real life. My biggest example is Pearl Harbor, right? He yeah. thought he died. Whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I Not think that would have been a much more not a much more interesting story, but a different level. This could have gone like leveled up a little bit if that is what happened. Okay. But aside from the triangle, we need to get into the fight. Yes. Okay. Great fight. But really quick. The Mm -hmm. one thing that got on my nerves is that Bella starts taking the blame. So Jacob, you know, they, they go out Edward, you know, he does his, he, you know, mind fucks and like, let's take them that they're engaged, blah, blah, blah. And, and Bella realizes that she's in love with Jacob. And then also she starts taking the blame and she's <laughs> yeah. like, I'm a horrible person, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, girl, put your big girl panties back on. You did not make either of these men behave this way. No, exactly. You were living your life, You were girl. just existing. You it's were just existing. It's not your fault that your pussy pops harder <laughs> than <laughs> most, okay? Let's call you yeah. sunshine because if you threw it up in the air, it would turn into sun. Basically. Let's stop Let's stop all this yeah. crying, girlfriend. And I just hate the fact that Bella always feels constantly guilty because she's like, yeah. it's not... It's like if someone can't handle having feelings for you and also being your friend, that's on that's them. That's their problem. Mm-hmm. That's this is not on you. This is a whole misogynistic, like I've had crazy worldview. I have had crushes on plenty of friends who don't love me. Kiki knows exactly who I'm talking about right now, <laughs> and he should love it me because be we're perfect, amazing. Though, but he doesn't. But and he I'm doesn't, okay and with that. Gotta grow up and deal with it. Exactly. We're just friends, and we're yeah. great. We'll just stay that way. There who ain't cares? no such thing as a friend zone, girl. Get over it. Yeah. That's his problem. And anyway, anyway. Um, so like Jacob basically mind also does a med- Jedi mind trick on Bella to force he threatens her suicide for a kiss. He threatens suicide. He's like, I'll just go off because you don't care about me. Guess I'll die now. Guess I'll die now. <laughs> and she's like, No, I love kiss me. I love you too. And I'm like, that's so messed up. Right? It's horrific. How dare you? This it's is so where like, I finally decided. It's coercion. I'm sorry for everything I said in previous episodes of this podcast. Yeah. I understood Team Jacob for a very long time, and now I can officially say you don't I do not. Know. It's coercion. Yeah. It is awful. Jacob is the worst. And you know what? If something worse happened to him in this book, I wouldn't have been upset. If he was crushed and didn't come back. Because he might have deserved it and it would have been a better end than having to deal with him any further. Because now he is on my chainsaw list. Yeah. He's on your shit list. It's coercion. Yeah. Like this second kiss, the way it's written and the way it's described is super creepy. 
but then it's also weirdly yeah. sexy. And like, I buy that Bella is in love with Jacob too, but then I also don't buy yeah. it at the same time because he constantly manipulates her into figuring out how she yeah. feels. And so I feel like the way she's written now, it's just manipulated into feeling like she's in love with him when really she just still loves him as a friend. I think that, the, hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I, I think don't it's, know. I just think it's poor writing. I think there was love there and I think it could have been seated better. Uh, I have a question. Hmm. So like, say, let's just go with like Bella chose Jacob, right? She decides to choose Jacob, but we all know the imprinting thing can be in the way. So could he just at that point in time, turn his werewolfism off and not worry about imprinting later? So there's a thing that I read on Tumblr um, that basically says that the whole reason that Jacob was even attracted to Bella to begin with is because he had already imprinted on her egg. That's <laughs> gross. Because our eggs are <laughs> You can't pick an egg. It's not real. I don't believe this. No. Eggs are not embry- like are not fetuses. Yeah. They're just cells, guys. Yeah. But eggs I mean, smell real good. Right? Them eggs, girl. So it's like, it's like a weasel or a fox now. Just like, like he's a possum. <laughs> He's awesome. a little possum going out there sniffing the hen house of a uterus <laughs> and her fucking ovaries. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. <laughs> but yeah, like, flat. do you think, because, you know, he talks about, like, w- they just turn the imprinting off and they would age together. So do you think if Bella was to choose him, he could just turn his Yeah, werewolf he would turn off. it off, yeah. That's, but that's supposedly what Billy that did. Billy supposedly just turned his werewolf off. But he said yeah. it takes years and years to learn how to control that. So once I'm in control of not being able to just phase when mm-hmm. I'm pissed off, then I can start to age. So, so then, it'll take some time. So then would Jacob have imprinted on their own child? No. Yeah. No, because I don't think so. Jacob's gone. Oh, okay. It's yeah. like I just, Edward. I don't know. Edward and their weird bromance. And that's the and thing. So on this, Bella's Jacob's egg. secretly in love with Edward, too. So <laughs> yes. on the same Tumblr post, somebody was like, well, maybe Jacob imprinted on Edward's sperm. This is disgusting. That's so gross. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, the combination. Uh, it's him. It's him finding a way to insert himself. It's like in Batman 1989 when they're like, "It's not the hairspray or the yeah. cologne; it's both of them at the same time." <laughs> uh, I think like, we'll just hit on this really quickly, and then we've got to get to like the fight, fight. Um, but I think Edward takes the news of the kiss really well because he knew it was happening. Yeah. He knew why it happened, and he's like, yeah, "It's whatever." Oh, whatever he's like yeah. so he's secure like, in himself. Yeah. I'm not mad at you. Shit like, happens. Shit happens. <laughs> Yeah. Also, I'm secure in this. Edward, We're this, getting is, married. this is the one time where Edward is showing his 117 year old maturity, and he's yeah. like, "Shit happens, whatever." He's like, yeah, "It's whatever. fine." And then you know, Bella turns into a thirsty psycho, and then the fight happens. And this you get, fight like, is so good. You get like Edward's like best sports announcer play by play of the fight. So good. <laughs> I'm just like imagining him like he's watching a baseball game and he's like, oh, this person hits the ball to left field and thrown out at first. Basically. Like, and you're like, what is happening? Edward, just, a.k.a. Chick Hearn. Yeah. <laughs> and I appreciate, though, that the movie, because like in the book, we don't get to see the fight. We just yeah. kind of hear Edward's announcerness. Yeah. But in the movie, we actually get to see it. And yeah. it's so epic. And you get to see how much the vampires are like enjoying it yes. and the werewolves are enjoying it. And I love that there's like a... Um, in the movie, you have like Emmett, and I'm assuming it's Paul. They take out a vampire together and they look at each other like, yeah. yeah. And then they keep going. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is so good. There are so many bits that I love about it. I love when Seth is pretending to be hurt. Mm-hmm. And so. Yeah. Oh, this, yeah. When we get to the Victoria, because so yeah. Victoria yeah. finds yeah. them. So so Edward steps in and then and then he's so mad because he's like, well, now I can't claim my own single handed kill because you stepped in. Yeah. I know. So this is something that kind of confused me when I was reading it. I want to get you guys' opinions. So, you know, like, Bella and that weird third wife foreshadowing, right? Um, of like, you know, the third yeah, wife yeah, yeah. who cuts herself in the blood and whatever. Um, so Bella is like, I have to help. I don't know what's happening. And she just I'm can't so like, useless. Eh. And like, she like grabs a stone and like hits it on her arm. But, and then you just like, she's like, you hear a sigh. And then Edward shoves, like pushes her, like takes the rock away and then yeah. goes and finishes it. So did she cut herself or not? Nah? Yes, like, I think in, so. In the movie, she does for sure. And she's like yeah. dripping. Yeah. And in the book, when it's all over, Edward's like, you can put down the rock now, Bella. Yeah. You know? Right. But I'm just like, is she just holding it and like dripping blood? Because they never really address that. I think that the the fault of a book is that you can't, like time passage is difficult. Yeah. And so for reading purposes, it takes multiple pages for this to happen. I think in real time, it really wasn't that long. She grabs the rock. She cuts herself. Vampires are moving so fucking fast. fast and Edward can read Victoria's mind yeah. that 
and yeah, all these things that are tick pages to describe really happen in a matter of moments. Yeah, there's and there's like a couple moments in this that I love. Like I like honestly like guffawed. I laughed out loud when it's like it's the lion versus the lioness, Ugh. and I was like that's so ridiculous. And I love that like as like Seth and Ed, as Seth is ripping Riley apart, Edward is using his body parts like projectile missiles. Yeah, and, yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> and I'm like what just throwing them at Victoria. Yeah. And yeah. I, like and, and like and, and you know. My question is also like I if you don't like you have the arm that's like crawling trying to get back and it to its owner. Like incense. Like, so I'm like, yeah. the vampires must smell good. And then there's that fist bump while Seth is still in wolf. Yes, yes! the vampire werewolf fist bump. But I love muzzle bump. <laughs> Muzzle bump? <laughs> no, it was a fist bump, girl. But yeah. he was still he a, was wolf. a wolf. But so can you imagine bump. someone yeah. like with a dog just being like pounded? Pound pound it. It. I was yeah. I, was I like, love this, the mind I had game. That note. I'm like the vampire werewolf fist bump. I love the mind game that Edward plays with Riley when he's like, "Yo, she doesn't care about you. Yes, this is not mm-hmm. about you, Riley. You can go home right now and, and be you'll, okay. You'll be all right. Yeah. Don't do it, bro." And he's just like, nah, I'm totally taken up by this amazing Harley Quinn-esque vampire yeah. lady. And loves then me, I love that Edward even like multiple, he, he manipulates Victoria and he's like, yo, James didn't give a shit about you either. Mm-hmm. Call this feud off. Go home. It ain't worth it. Yeah. And then he rips her head off and she dies. Yeah. <laughs> I love that he rips her head off. Like I know Ugh. it's violent, Ugh. but Jesus, it's, it's so, so good. good. It's so good. It's so good. When like the, one of the big, cause I feel like the ending of Eclipse is completely different than the book. So like, you know, she cuts herself because Edward is in like trouble, yeah. but Edward was never in trouble yeah. in the mm-hmm. book. Like she never had him in a headlock. And that was part of her. That's part of Bella's faulty humanity. Right. Yeah. And I just like, you know, just changes that happen. And th- so what would happen, though, if you didn't burn every piece of vampire? Because, like, we've got the, like, the weird little arm that's trying to crawl back would to its it owner. Would it reattach? Like, I feel like I've seen horror movies where the pieces of a monster, like, reattach yeah. to themselves. But if the rest, because, you know, they go around, like, collecting yeah. the pieces. But what if they missed a piece? Like, what would happen to it? That hand is just, like, <laughs> it's, just it's, like, like <laughs> it's like Thing. And, like, why do they, like, so- grow into a vampire over <laughs> No, time? I just feel like it's, like, Thing. Or, like, in, D- in Dungeons and Dragons, there's a there's a magical thing called Mage Hand. Yeah. Where it's just a hand that just <laughs> roams around doing shit for you. It's like Thing. And, like, why are they so flat? <laughs> Flammable. Well, you know what I mean? Like, why do they smell like Because fire incense? kills everything, y'all. Like, That's you fair. burn them and it's like Palo Santo all over it. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of cool. Let me cleanse myself. Uh, it's like, what's the scent of this candle? Oh, girl, it's vampire. It's vampire. Death. Don't worry about it. Like, it's vampire ash, girl. So now they're like, the fight is over. Everyone's okay except for Jacob who gets a little hurt. And uh, like, the Volturi show up. A deserved. little hurt? I mean, deserved. he's, he's going to be fine. Yeah. Whatever. That's what um, you get for trying to be the hero. That's what you get for playing games. You that's play stupid games, games. You win stupid prizes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but am, like you know, and they've got the Brie, and I know Brie had this like spinoff book that she got. But am I the only one who feels like she was a worthless character and there was oh, really same. no point? No I point think she just did it for the spinoff book. It's like y'all read Dickens or Jane Austen where there's that chapter like we didn't need this chapter, but because they're getting paid by the chapter, it was in there. Right. <laughs> and you're just like that's how I felt about this Brie, like Brie Brie character. I'm like none of this mattered. They could have just been standing there waiting for the Volturi and I not think even worried about it. Maybe they wanted to show how vicious the Volturi. Are? are if that if there is a plot reason for it, it's to show that the Volturi are sure. are monsters. They don't play games; they're monsters. Yeah. But also, there was also the injection of Wuthering Heights throughout this entire book, yeah. and Bella being like, "I'm the monster because I'm creating all these problems," and blah blah blah. Right? She's like ridiculous. you know, it's it's just yeah. kind of trying to level the playing field. Yeah, like, this isn't as crazy as you would think for a girl to be in love with a vampire and werewolf. Here's yeah. stories of right like rapture and love and blah 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 yeah so i love that the volturi get called out um about you know showing up late and they're like yeah, yeah so like you were obviously trying to kill us all but then i also kind of love that jane hits on carlisle <laughs> <laughs> you know and she's Carla. i mean peter facinelli i know daddy but then i'm kind of like so like does that make ro gay because she's you know i, what I mean? think so like he was like in love with carlisle but then did, was Carlisle is Carlisle like a bisexual? bisexual? Yeah, why not? I'm into it. Like, when does it happen? <laughs> I'm like, can Don't we have you remember? That? I wanted Jonathan Van Ness to play Aro anyway. True yeah. story. <laughs> You're right. You're not wrong. Yeah. I hear you. Um, and I still stand my love of Charlie because you know he has all. <laughs> <laughs> these answers in front of his face, right? He's like, oh, these crazy things are happening around. And, you know, uh, Jacob and his motorcycle accident. And, you know, we had these where the bear issue the bear going issue on. And, and I'm just Billy like, was so anxious today, but I don't know. Was, yeah, uh, whatever. Was anxious, so, you know? During that whole time, I don't know what's happening. We but, you heard know, howling and then we had to come back from the fishing trip. <laughs> <laughs> And he's just like, but you know what, Bella? I feel like you're about to leave me. Please just don't run away. 
right? Yeah, just tell he me first. knows something he is knows. happening. He just doesn't want it. And I feel like that's such a human thing where like your intuition is telling you that something is amiss and uh-huh. you don't, mm-hmm. you don't want to, to go for the obvious answer that something is amiss. Yeah. But you still plan for that thing. And you're like, something's up. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to recognize this, but I will still plan for whatever this thing is. Yeah. yeah. When and something's yeah. wrong, you just know something's wrong. You feel it. Yeah. And that's where Charlie's at. And he doesn't quite, he's like, I will be here when she wants to share it with me. And all I ask is that you don't leave also, me. Also, think yeah. of it. Bella comes into town and then shit just starts getting crazy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> show up. It's so true. He's got to know. living as poor. Yeah, Small right. Life. Charlie has never and had this much activity as crazy. the sheriff ever, ever. ever. Now There's he's got to <laughs> hire a task force and shit. He's like, like he's got to hire a bear task force. There's never been this much activity in forks. For people like, and this, comb in the woods. This is a Vampire Diaries. You know, there's no weird group that's waiting for the vampires to reappear. Yeah, in Mystic so, Falls. So Charlie knows there's some shit happening. He just doesn't want to like. Admit it. Admit it. Yeah. And he's still just a just a gem of a human being. He is a gem of a he's human a being. And also you Charlie, know, and he Charlie doesn't even, is just... And he doesn't, to his credit, he doesn't try and stop her no, ever. He doesn't. No. He has grounded her. He's done other things where he feels like he's disrespecting, where he feels like she is disrespecting his rules. But he's never tried to stop her. And yeah. he even at this point is like, you know what? You're going to leave. Just give me some notice beforehand. Then, you know, Let me deal with it. It's thing of yeah. like... I, it was it was the movie right where he's like, why didn't you get remarried? You know, Bella. Oh yeah, that's situation. the movie. That's in the movie. And I also feel like that's kind of a testament to Charlie of like, I fell in love young with your mother, but that was like the only person and accidentally me. pregnant. Like they yeah. dropped that in the movie yeah. too, and you're like, oh yeah. And like you know, I knocked her up, but that's fine because she was the only person for me. And yeah. even though she decided to leave me with you, like she's still the only yeah. person for me well, I think that changes in Breaking Dawn but like I think because he sees it and he's like I do need to move on with my life yeah. and eventually does uh, um, but then we get the epilogue there's a part in the book where they where where Jacob or no where Edward does say something about an eclipse and I love it because I love oh, yeah. I love when they say the title of a TV show or a movie, a movie. or a book mm-hmm. in the text it's my favorite thing in the world if it's a TV show I clap when they do it so <laughs> thank You're you like, it's like something like you can't you. fight with an eclipse, an eclipse or something like that <laughs> hey, he said it. He said it. <laughs> and you know they get engaged officially and it's, they have to wait, tell Charlie wait, we gotta say that quote oh, though go ahead do it it's the clouds I can handle but I can't bite with an eclipse oh he Ooh! said it he uh, <laughs> said it he said the line guys <laughs> um, and then we get the epilogue Alice is planning the wedding Alice is planning the there's wedding. an epilogue and there's an epilogue of Jacob getting the wedding invitation and I'm I honestly do think this was done do out of... Y'all, I don't think it was done with malice. So that's what I was going to ask. Do y'all think that Edward was genuinely being kind or do you think he was rubbing salt in the wound? I might actually be a little bit of both, but I do think it was more kind because I do think that Edward would would, would have wanted to know. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Bella said she wanted a veto list. Yes. And, you know, Edward's probably communicated to Alice like, look, there's going to be some werewolves at this wedding and then we're just going to have to deal with it because this mm-hmm. is Bella's wedding too. Yeah, yeah. like this wasn't, I, it might have been a little nose rubbing and, and the shit and it might have, and I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. You know, like he's like, look, this is what's happening. I think you deserve to know, but also like, bitch, I won. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. And I, 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 I agree She's with you. I think that's where it is. I think it's a very much like a, I know her, I know her feelings. I know that in at the end of the day, she considers you a very close friend and she would want you to know as her friend, but also, fuck you. <laughs> she mine. She mine. <laughs> anyway, so guys, that was Eclipse. So, do you think Eclipse is still is your favorite book still, or are you waiting to for? Is the jury still out until Breaking Dawn? Uh, jury still out until Breaking Dawn. I want to reread Breaking Dawn because that is the one that I have read the least out of all four books. Mm-hmm. I think I've read Breaking Dawn twice maybe three times and the other ones i've definitely read upwards of three like you know at the highlight yeah. of your twilight obsession you're just reading all of them over and over and over again until you get to the next <laughs> one mm-hmm. so that's why like with the with with yeah. breaking knots one i've read the least because there is no next one right that makes sense so i am mm-hmm. excited to read it again and see what happens yes but Look. i think eclipse will still be my favorite after that just because fucking renesme man god Oh, oh, so we will be breaking Breaking Dawn up into three parts. Bella, Jacob, Bella. As the book is As broken up. As the book up. is broken up. So that'll be the next one, guys. And until then, fork off. Fork off. Fork off. Fork off.
If you want to know what the fork is up, head on over to our Streamer Links page at streamerlinks.com slash smells like teen angst to follow all our personal social media and pages.